receiver Tyler Boyd on what he saw out of Pittsburgh. As the last plays of the game for them, they gave up. You could see it. They had three drops on a row, but they portrayed it to to the whole uh, nation on TV with what, what, what they were about and how they gave up. Steelers have been a mess offensively this year. It's been a struggle for them to block for either the run or the pass and consequently to score. In all those categories, they rank near the bottom of the league. Here's what future Hall of Fame coach Mike Tomlin had to say about it today. I don't care about Tyler Boyd's opinion regarding what transpired at any point in that game. Um, like I said, after the game, and it includes him, I tip my cap to that team and that organization for their performance and win. And um, I proceed uh, moving on to the next challenge. And, you know, we better play better the next time we see him. Let's bring back Dominique Foxworth. And you can see Ryan Clark has now turned into Jeff Saturday. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Since then. <laughs> <laughs> you saw it. Oh, Since their 11 0 start long, last man. season, the Steelers have only won two of their last nine games 11 straight wins and then two and seven, right? It seems to me, Jeff, that Mike Tomlin kind of squeezed the last bit of juice out of his old QB and team and, you know, that whole run, and there's just nothing left. That's what it feels like. What do you see as their biggest issue right now? I would love to agree with you. And I can partially understand why you would say that. My question is, if that's true, why do they throw it 60 times? Like, like at some point when you're like, oh, he's washed up, he can't do this, he can't do that. There is absolutely zero balance in this offense. They can't run it. I guess there's balance. It's poor all the way around. But it's, you know, they're, they're averaging 53 yards a game running the football, which doesn't give you any hope that you're going to run it. He's throwing it for under six yards per completion. But I would say this, when you hear Mike Tomlin and what he said after these comments about the Boyd uh, situation is, we got to fix it schematically. And what does that mean? That means whether you have to get into big personnel, bring tight ends in, put Watt back there at fullback, you know, and, and, and allow them to become a kind of what, what New England did four or five years ago. Remember when they kind of reverted back to old school football? If that gives you the best chance to win because it complements your defense, that's the way they need to go. They are not going to win asking Ben Roethlisberger to throw it 60 times. Oh, fullbacks were extinct. I missed yeah. the days of fullbacks. Yeah, but I they got one. They're, they're fullbacks used to roam the earth. That was fun. <laughs> love- Nick, it seems like it's hard for me to imagine a Mike Tomlin team with an awful record. He's never been less than 8-8, eight eight, even without a quarterback. Right. But I look at the schedule. Where are these wins going to come from? Oh, they're going to have to get some wins in the division just off of familiarity with those teams, those opponents, because it's going to be tough. But I understand where you're coming from, Jeff, but their best players are their receivers. Yeah. So you've got to have to throw it to them. And it's difficult to get a running game going your right. They need to to run the ball, to take some of the pressure off of Ben Roethlisberger. But they, his arm, his lack of arm strength at this point is in a situation where it doesn't complement them. So he can't throw it deep. So the defense comes up. And the defense coming up makes it tougher for them to run. So they need to be able to attack down the field or at least threaten that. And they can't do that right now. And the O-line yeah. hasn't gotten any better. Now, I, I, love, I will say this, though. Like Watching that Cincinnati game, they rushed three and dropped eight, which means they have three defensive linemen coming and eight people going to play coverage. Like at some point, you got to run the ball. Like, like you can't. You can't block for the run. I mean, they my word. They can't block for the yeah, run. That, that does not. They, they draft the running back, but they don't fix the line. They yeah. can't. What, what are they drafting the running back for? He's the big receiver. He had 100 yeah. yards. He had 100 he, yards. Yeah, 14 receiver. catches or something. <laughs> yeah, 14 man. catches and 100 yards receiving. Doesn't get any easier. They have a tough road game. I'd call it a tough road game this Sunday against Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Tough. Very. <laughs> From the NFL to a big one Saturday in college football. Number 12, Ole Miss will go to Tuscaloosa to face number one ranked Alabama this Saturday. Ole Miss quarterback Matt Corral and the offense is averaging nearly 53 points a game this season. 53, I said, under head coach Lane Kiffin. They'll be taking on a Bama defense that looked vulnerable um, a few weeks ago in the swamp. Vulnerable, almost lost that game. Against Florida, of course, Nick Saban is just ridiculous against his former assistants. We shall see. Time to Welcome Greg McElroy, former Alabama quarterback and SEC network analyst. Greg, we saw Florida challenge Alabama two weeks ago. Now Ole Miss is coming in to face the Crimson Tide with Heisman candidate Matt Corral. Do you think they can challenge Bama Saturday? I think last year was a good indicator of just how dangerous this Ole Miss team can be, Max. This is a group 
with a Heisman contender and obviously right now a Heisman favorite in Matt Corral. A really talented group of wide receivers on the outside. A lot of really capable faces in the backfield like Jerry on Ely. And this is an Alabama group on defense that struggled last year against Lane Kiffin in this passing attack. They often were out of position. They didn't tackle very well. They were gashed over and over and over again. So I'm actually of the mindset that Alabama, however, has circled this performance. That defense was embarrassed last year. And I think they've circled this game saying, hey, this is the game where we're going to get back on track because last year it was not what we've come to expect from Alabama teams if years passed on defense. So I think it's going to be a great matchup. I think Ole Miss is going to have a tougher time moving the football than they did last year against an Alabama defense that was really, really, really easy to get by. Matt Corral, yeah. College game day will be in Athens, where eighth-ranked Arkansas will take on second-ranked Georgia. What's the key for the Razorbacks for them to beat the Bulldogs? Well, they have to be able to match the physicality first and foremost. If you look at Georgia, man, they've just been pushing people around. I mean, just beating people up, both offensively and defensively. But if you look at what Arkansas has been up to this point, they have a quarterback in K.J. Jefferson, who's extremely big, he's extremely physical, he's 250 pounds, and is a handful when he's running the football. He's actually built a lot, Max, like Cam Newton. Now, he's not the thrower that Cam Newton is, but he is a capable runner with the ball in his hands, and at that size, I think he can cause a lot of problems. Then on the outside, when he does have to throw it, he has a receiver in Traylon Burks, who is one of the more talented wide receivers you'll see, not just in the SEC, but in all of college football. The guy wears a size 5X glove. Uh, so to think that he has an, a catch radius that's ridiculous, he can essentially, if a ball's up in the air, he's coming down with it because he just has bigger hands. He's stronger than just about any corner he'll see at the college level. So I think that's going to be a really interesting matchup. If those two guys bring their A game, then they could make life potentially difficult on Georgia and their home game there in Athens. Finally, Greg, many shows have been running the stat, and I'm sure this, won't be the, this is not the first or last time you'll be asked about it, but your first start in the NFL, you were sacked 11 times. 